Good day, Grade 10. Today we continue with our lesson on functions. So let's go through what we know already. Function basics. First of all, we know our variables. We know that x is the independent variable. In other words, that's the input variable, the variable that we're going to put in. y is our dependent variable. So therefore, that's our output variable. So if we look at, for example, y is equal to 2x, we can see that if we put in different input values for x, so if, for example, we have got that we let x equal to 1, then we get an output variable or dependent variable which is dependent on it, which is 1 is equal to 2 times 1, y is equal to 2 times 1, which is 2. If x is minus 3, please note that we're changing it, so if it's the independent variable, it's the input variable, then we can say y is equal to 2 times minus 3, which is minus 6. So the y is dependent on the x, and the x is the one that we actually are putting in, the value that we're putting in. Right, let's continue. So now there are different ways that we can write um, a set notation. In other words, we can write what the variables fit into. So what this is saying is that x is an element of real values, but x is smaller than zero. Now I don't know if you remember, but the real values are basically all the numbers from minus infinity all the way through to plus infinity. So they are saying that the variables that we can use are all the values from x equals minus infinity to plus infinity, every single number on the real axis, but now they've limited us to say that x must be smaller than zero. So in other words, if this is zero, then we would write an open circuit circle if this was a number line and we would draw an arrow. So we would be using all the numbers from not including zero but below zero all the way to minus infinity. So that's what that means. All right, let's look at another example. Yeah, you've got y is an element of natural numbers, okay, from y is bigger than negative four and smaller than equal to three. So if we had to draw a number line here, okay, what have we got? We've got y is going to be now this is interesting because we've got natural numbers and natural numbers actually start at zero. They don't go below zero. But they say that y is between minus four and three, but because it's natural numbers, it's actually bigger than naught. So that's an open circle there because it's bigger than naught. Okay. And then it is smaller than or equal to 3. So it is going to be smaller than and equal to 3. So therefore, your y can be any number between 0 and 3. Let's look at another example. Yeah, we've got x is the element of z. And what is z? z stands for integers. So those are your whole numbers. So this is saying that x is an element of integers, but x is going to be greater than 100. So in other words, if I had to start my number line here at 100, x could be 100, or it could be 101, or it could be 102, or it could be 103, okay? or whatever, all the way to infinity, but it has to be a whole number. So do you understand what these set notations are telling us? Now there's another way that we can write what our variables have to fit into, and that is called the interval notation. Now the interval notation, we must understand what these different brackets mean. So a square bracket means that we're including the numbers. So if I again had to write this on a number line, this would be two, and this would be 10. And the square bracket 2 to the square bracket 10 is saying that we're including 2 and we're including 10. So we're saying all the numbers between 2 and 10 and including 2 and 10. Okay, happy with that. Let's try another example. Right, this time we've got what they call parentheses or curly brackets. Now, what that means is it is not including 2. So this includes the numbers, and this 
excludes the numbers. So if we had to draw a number line here, we would have 2 and an open circle, and we'd have 10 and an open circle, and then we'd have to join them. So it'd be every number between 2 and less than 10. Right, let's do a final example of the interval notation. Yeah, we've got something interesting. This includes 2, but it excludes, excludes 10. So if I draw a number line, it's going to be 2, and we're including it, so it's a little closed dot, but we're going to 10, but we're not including 10. So that'll be an open dot. So basically this says that we, your variable, variables can be used if they are between 2, but including 2, and less than 10. Okay, now let's look at some conversions. It says write the following in set notation. So the best way to do this is first of all to write our little number line. Okay, so we've got, it's going from minus 6 to 3, it's including minus 6, but it's excluding 3. So what are we saying? We're saying x has to be smaller than 3, but it can be bigger than equal to minus 6. And because they don't give us any limitations, we can therefore say that x is an element of real values. And then you just put your little brackets in. See, not so bad. Let's try another one. Minus infinity to 3. Okay, here's a hint. You cannot ever reach infinity, so you should always be using the parentheses or the curly brackets when you use minus infinity or plus infinity, but in this case we're using minus infinity. So if we had to do a number line, we are going to go from 3, because this is a square bracket, we're including 3, and then we're going to minus infinity, which means we're going that way. So if I had to write that down in this type of format, I would say that x has to be smaller than or equal to 3. And then again, because I didn't put any limitations on it, it's just going to be x is an element of real values. Right, let's try one more. Oh, no we're not. Let's do write the following in interval notation. So now we're going to do it the other way. Okay, so again, a nice easy way to do this is to do your number line. We've got from minus 3 to 10. You'll notice there is no equal sign here, so this is an open bracket. But we are making that equal, so that's a nice closed bracket, and we're going from minus 3 to 10. So if you've got an open circle and equals, what do we have? We have a curly bracket minus 3 or parentheses and then we're going to what? We're going to 10 and we including 10 so we have a square bracket, right? Let's look at another example. This time we've got again a number line and we're going from 12, we're not including 12, please note we're not including 12 and we're going all the way up to positive infinity. So this is going to be a curly bracket because we're not including 12. So it's 12. And then we're going all the way up to positive infinity. And then because you can never get to infinity, it's again a curly bracket. Okay, so not too bad, but you guys need to be able to work out how this how this can be represented in two different ways. You need to be able to understand that. Let's look at the function notation. This is how we express a function. y is equal to 3x plus 4. In other words, y is dependent on x, okay, and we manipulate the x to give us a y. We can also write it as f of x equals 3x plus 4. And we say it like that, f of x is equal to 3x plus 4. That's what we say. That's just exactly the same as saying y is equal to 3x plus 4. f of x, in other words, a function of x is equal to 3x plus 4. Don't freak out if in the exams or in the examples they use g of x, p of x, t of x, q of x, r of x. It really doesn't matter what this letter is. It's really just what they assign it. Okay, let's look at an example. So they're telling us that f of x equals 3x plus 4 and they're saying find f of minus 2. 
So what this means is that they want the value of the function when x equals minus 2. So what they're really saying is we need to, wherever we see x, we need to substitute in minus 2. So if I did that, f of x, sorry, let's try again, f of minus 2 is going to be 3 times minus 2 plus 4. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6, it's minus 6 plus 4, which equals minus 2. So remember that f of x could be replaced with the letter y. So this is also saying that when x equals minus 2, y happens to equal minus 2 as well. Okay, or if we need to plot it on a Cartesian point, that would be minus 2, minus 2. Right, let's look at another example. Again, we're using f of x is equal to 3x plus 4, but this time they say find x if f of x equals 13. So this time, this year is 13. So what are we really trying to find? That means we want to find the value which gives us a y value of 13. So for this time, we've got 13 is equal to 3x plus 4. Take the 4 across, so you've got 13 minus 4 is equal to 3x. 13 minus 4 is 9 is equal to 3x. So therefore, x is equal to 3. So what does this mean? That means when x equals 3, y is equal to 13. Okay, so if I substitute this, and then that would mean that if I plotted this, it would be 3, 13. So right, grade 10s, that is the basics of functions. We're going to, in the next few lessons, learn about specific functions more cleverly, I mean more detailedly, and then you need to make sure that you understand and can manipulate all the functions. Have a great day.